Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our second special focus dialogues in the series of uh, UICC. Uh, and we're still waiting a few people and many people right on time. That's very good to see. So as I say, welcome everybody. We're here for the second special focus dialogues and this time we're going to look at uh, digital strategies. This is the first in a series on digital strategies and particularly looking at digital uh, leadership. Uh, I'm not going to take uh, too much of your time apart from saying a warm welcome to everybody and I hope everybody's safe wherever they uh, linking in from. Uh, but I'll uh, give the floor directly to Zoe Amar, be facilitating this uh, dialogues and uh, I wish you an enjoying dialogue going forward. Zoe, over to you. Thank you very much, Alessandro, and hello, everyone. Uh, we're delighted to be here. Um, I'm Zoe Amma. Uh, I run a digital agency. We work with uh, lots of charities and non-profits, uh, and I'm also here with my colleagues, uh, Jen Lothrop and Rebecca Ray Evans here today as well. I think are uh, giving you a wave as we speak. Uh, as Alessandro said, uh, this is obviously a series of webinars to get you thinking about where your organisation is, is going with digital uh, and some of the key aspects around that. Uh, obviously the focus today is about digital leadership but in upcoming webinars we'll be looking at uh, some other topics which we know are important to you around fundraising and generating income, service delivery and also some wider digital issues too. And I, why I'm particularly excited to be a part of this project is because I, I know that the pandemic has really brought a lot of these uh, digital changes into sharp focus given a much greater need for them and perhaps accelerated some existing trends as well. And I think what is, is really important about all of this is that uh, so much of the, uh, the sort of shape of, of the organisations that we'll see in the future and uh, what your organisations will, will look like perhaps two years down the line uh, is very much in the hands of leaders. Uh, so UICC uh, thought that this webinar series would help give people a chance to talk to their peers, uh, to learn from some experts and also to hear from members in the UICC community about how they're tackling similar challenges because I think that however talented, however skilled with digital you are, I think there's some big questions, uh, big challenges, also big opportunities that we're all wrestling with at the moment. So we're really pleased to be diving into those today and over the next few weeks. So just to say a little bit about uh, our approach to the webinar today, uh, um, obviously following digital principles we wanted to make sure that the content that we put together today was very much based on your needs and what's particularly important to you at the moment. So Alessandro very kindly agreed to run a survey, which I'm sure some of you will have taken, and I thought it might be interesting to replay the top five needs back to you because we've carved the agenda around that. Uh, so obviously thinking strategically, so really planning for how your organisation will use digital beyond the crisis is an issue which, which lots of leaders in, in all sectors are obviously beginning to give a lot of thought to. Uh, so perhaps no surprise that came out as number one. Uh, so we've got an exercise uh, as we get into the webinar to get you thinking about that. Um, your third need was around planning your COVID-19 digital roadmap. And the reason why I've jumped to that one is because I think one and three kind of go hand in hand. You can't really plan one effectively without thinking through where you want to be in the long term. So I've got an exercise that comes directly after uh, uh, thinking about the future because uh, I think it'll be good to consider both of those topics side by side. Clearly how you motivate and engage staff during this period of, of enormous change when your organisation might be going through a, a lot of twists and turns and they personally may also be going through some really significant challenges uh, is, is something which is, is a real priority uh, for the UICC members but I think also is, is shared by many leaders and many organisations looking at the conversations that I've been having over uh, the, the last few weeks and months. So we'll be looking at that as well. 
and then obviously very much aligned to that how you use digital to communicate with a, a remote team because again I, I don't think you can really do two without doing number four on this list really effectively uh, and then I think as we go through there'll be some really interesting questions and issues that come up around how to change your leadership style uh, that perhaps wasn't a, a huge priority in the survey itself but I think it's a bit of a golden thread that's going to run through all of this and already I think we're starting to see much more of a uh, sense in leadership of people moving towards collective leadership rather than command and control uh, so we'll be talking about some of that I'm sure that will come up throughout and I know that Alessandra had a really interesting piece of very recent feedback which was about how you um, do performance reviews and look at that uh, when you're doing it really because that's always an interesting challenge and I think that will come up when we look at the exercises around two and four. Okay so hopefully that's useful just to do a bit of a playback of uh, your, your needs so I think it's interesting to get that sense of where the UICC community is at. Um, before we get into the content just a few uh, suggestions on uh, what makes an effective webinar and um, we run quite a lot of webinars I'm sure you've all been to a million webinars over the, the last few months uh, and these are three things that we, we've learned about what helps them work well if you can it would be great if you can have your camera on I know um, some of you do which is great I know it's not always possible because of connectivity issues or um, you know if you have particularly lively pets in the background although we, we do like pets so we'd love to see them um, but if you can have your camera on that is great because I think it's just nice for everyone to see everyone's faces uh, I would just recommend that if you can put yourself on mute when others are speaking that's always greatly appreciated helps everyone hear the person who's speaking a bit better uh, and then um, if you want to uh, speak because obviously it's gonna be a very interactive webinar we're really keen to have your contributions you can either physically put your hand up and myself, Alessandro, Jen and Bex will keep an eye out for you um, or you can use the reactions <laughs> button which you can see at the bottom of the screen and you can um, select one of the, the hand gestures there and put your hand up that way however you want to do it um, but we will all collectively keep an eye out for you and just as oh Sandra's putting his hand up very good he's found the reaction button excellent um, and um, Alessandro Den and Bex if there's anyone who's got the hand up who I don't spot please just just nudge me and we'll make sure you get around everyone Fantastic. Okay, very good. Right, so let's get going. Um, so we want to hear a bit more about where you are all at at the moment. So we'd like to hear about one digital change that you've made during COVID-19 that you would like to keep because this does seem to be a bit of a, a theme of the discussions we're having with leaders lately uh, so I'm going to give you a moment to think about that and then if you could put your answer in the chat box that would be brilliant. Oh people already putting them in very good. Zoom meetings, very good. I feel like I should definitely have bought shares in Zoom. Lots about tools to collaborate, very good. Brilliant. Any others? Social media for connecting patients, that sounds very interesting. Very good. Digital fundraising, lots of thoughts there. And lots about how we use the tools and things like that. That's that's a really good point. Brilliant. So um, just before we uh, crack on with the first exercise, can I just come back to one of these comments? There's so much good stuff here. Um, I think it's Alejandra. Can I ask you about the emotional support groups? Because it feels like that would be quite an important issue for everyone who's here today. Hi. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Alessandro. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Alejandra. I come from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, Fundación Cima is the foundation I, um, I preside. And um, we always had this um, th this emotional support groups, but we mm -hmm. always had them like personal, of course. We never even thought of the idea of going online with this uh, with these sessions. Now with the um, pandemic, we were forced kind of to uh, give it a try. 
And um, turns out that in a country like Mexico, it worked out really, really, really well. I mean, first we had to, of course, teach the, the people how to, how to do it, how to even go uh, uh, into the link that we sent them and how to uh, put their cameras. And that was already a little bit of a workshop of, uh, with all of these uh, women. And, uh, but then they realized that although they don't have this, this warmth maybe that we have while we are close to another person, they really appreciated the time they had saved um, mm -hmm. going from their houses to the, to, the, to the foundation's office where we hold these sessions. And um, they are very, very happy to save about three hours a day transportation in public transportation. So we are definitely going to keep this in the future. Um, we won't... Um, we're still going to have the other ones, but we're trying to organize if it's going to be like the first two sessions personal and then go online and then maybe mid way do another personal one. We're still trying to figure that out, but it's definitely worked. And at least in a country like mine, uh, we are really going to keep those. Mm -hmm. That's that's really interesting. Thank you. And I think that really speaks to uh, the the trends actually that I, I've seen with a number of leaders that I've been speaking to recently that once people whether they're external stakeholders or internal stakeholders really uh, start to see the benefits of digital everyone's adjusted surprisingly quickly haven't they which is which yeah. is, is great and as you say there's something there about building on that momentum as a leader and and what you can do with it fantastic okay that's really good um and uh dr hadi can i ask you the point about digital fundraising because that's obviously very useful for us we've got an upcoming webinar about that um do you want to say a bit more about that dr hadi are you there hello everyone hi uh, hello hello everyone uh, uh I'm, I'm glad to be here so uh we actually uh so I'll share how, uh, what uh, what we did in, in the in the COVID uh, COVID nineteen uh, period. So uh, around February, when we, when the whole uh, things start to go international, we had a meeting with our strategic planning committee, and we start to put scenarios of of moving into uh, digital fundraising uh, channels, uh, the variety of use, using social media. Uh, platform and online uh, uh, the web through the website and we had a variety of uh, uh, platforms and channels and projects uh, regarding uh, the digital fundraising and we also start focusing on the concept how we're going to motivate people to actually donate uh, in these times mm -hmm. and actually we had we had a very successful uh, outcome uh, we we were lucky. I mean, we had uh, actually we, we reached our annual uh, goal of fundraising. We were done. We reached our our annual yeah. So actually now we are trying to build at, uh, toward the end of the year all the our fundraising project. It's gonna be to be like surplus for the unknown uh, 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 you know, uh, economical situation in the future. Wow, that's that's truly impressive that you've already made that that target. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, that's that's brilliant, and it sounds like you've got. I would imagine you have some really interesting insights, also as as well as income from that, which will inform your uh, future digital fundraising. So it's so brilliant that you've been able to ha have that success so quickly. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure lots of we we can learn from that as well. And we hope to see you at our uh, digital fundraising webinar later in the series too. Fantastic. Right. So some brilliant examples there of how working practice is changing, but also perhaps an aspect of service delivery is changing and how generate income differently too. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, so uh, what I'd like to get you thinking about now is obviously we're all beginning to think a bit more about the, the future as lockdown begins to ease in various countries, but also given that this has been going on a while now, I think inevitably leaders' minds are starting to turn to, well, given that we've already made these changes, what does that mean for where we could be? So what I'd like you to do is just to give you uh, a moment to really to think about that. So some of these changes that you've seen, and we've had a couple of brilliant examples of that already, think about the enormous amount of digital <coughs> progress that many of your organisations will have made over the last few months. What would you like your organisation to stop 
start, continue or change in digital two years from now, say June 2022. So I'm going to give you um, a couple of minutes to think about that. Uh, and then again, we will take uh, a couple of, of examples. Um, and once you've done some thinking, if you could pop that into the, the chat box, don't worry if it's just a brain dump at this stage, it probably will be. Uh, but the idea is just to get you thinking about these four areas and then we can see where everyone is at. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. And if you just pop that into the chat when you're ready, that would be great. Thank you. Keep them coming. Very good. I think some people are still writing from what I can see, but some people have stopped. So whilst uh, people are still typing away and doing thinking. Um, Chris Cheng, you've put a brilliant example here. Do you just want to, to talk us through that? Uh, and then we can see um, some other contributions as well. But Chris, it'd be great if you could talk us through what you've written. Um, so I've written down that we are actually planning to start an online support group, um, actually through Facebook or through WhatsApp. Uh, start digital fundraising. We've seen what uh, digital fundraising can do with other organizations that we are in touch with, uh, even from just soliciting donations from uh, using Facebook ads, they were getting very good returns. Um, starting an online health check for cancer prevention. Actually, I've been meaning to do this even before the lockdown because of uh, <coughs> a visit to uh, Hong Kong Anti Cancer Society. They do it, but um, they do it manually. Mm. So it, there's no reason why you can't do it online, which makes it also much cheaper to run. Um, we've been doing online meetings on Zoom, so it's actually better, it's easier to coordinate time. Uh, everybody just, you know, stays at home. It's definitely much easier. Uh, we've done a series of webinars. Uh, it's it went well, so I don't see why we should stop. <laughs> so uh, that's my contribution. Bye. That's, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for anyone who doesn't know, where are you based, Chris? Uh, I'm from the Society for Cancer Advocacy and Awareness in Kuching, Malaysia. Brilliant. Great. Lo lovely to have you with us today. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, okay, so um, a great example there from Chris to kick us off thinking about what to start and what to continue. We've got some other really good uh, examples here as, as well, which is super. Um, ooh, Karen, you've got a very exciting one here about continuing digital transformation. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that, Karine? I hope I'm saying that right. Please correct me if I got it wrong. Yeah, um, so actually I'm working at, uh, at UICC and the digital transformation oh. of uh, UICC. If you, um, uh, this is something we are, we are planning with, uh, with the team in order to uh, support all the members uh, worldwide uh, to have more uh, online activities and, uh, and, uh, and have the platform developed to have access to resources as well. So, yeah. Uh, I, I wish we will uh, continue that uh, transformation of UICC. Great. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. So good to hear about the um, pace that you're you're picking up there and thinking about how you can uh, build on that, which is which is great. Um, 
And um, Francis, you've got a lovely example here about starting a virtual partnership meeting. Um, do you want to say wh where you're from and, and a bit more about uh, what you've put there? Okay, um, I work for the World Ovarian Cancer Coalition and we have around 150 members in 40 countries. Um, and we've always wanted to host a partnership meeting where we bring people together on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Um, but for many patient organisations, that's just too much of an expense. Mm -hmm. um, so we are now planning our first one next September uh, in 2021 following a year of online and digital activity um, so I think it is really opening up opportunities we've run um, webinars and discussions uh, about things that we've learnt we did a survey of members with a whole range of coalitions and presented the results to them and have had questions uh, and good discussions and it's really I think the focus is on engaging and enabling I think it's, it's very easy in the digital sphere to just chuck stuff out um, and you know already maybe people are beginning to be a bit like oh, another another invite to do this that and the other so trying to make everything really valuable for those involved yeah absolutely so I, I guess the key there um, as, as you were alluding to is about understanding what those uh, user needs are and how you can uh, configure that, that offer that you talked about so that it really meets those those needs and obviously it fits with people's changing situations as as you say because it, it it kind of feels like um that at the start of lockdown people had a lot more time and suddenly everyone seems to be getting busier and busier so yeah i think that's you you're absolutely right to think about how it works with um what people have have got on okay well some brilliant examples there thank you so much i hope that's got you all thinking about what you are going to stop start and continue change in digital be beyond the crisis uh, and this might be quite a nice exercise that you can take back to your organizations as well uh, what we're seeing with uh, a lot of organisations at the moment is because the last couple of months have been a period of such in intense activity where it, it feels as if for, for many leaders and also for, for many staff as well, no one's really had a chance to, to draw breath as they've been adjusting and, and doing these incredibly intense programmes of, of work what can work quite nicely is to perhaps get key people in the organisation together, probably on Zoom again, uh, and to and to perhaps from what we in digital would call a, a, a retrospective, so where you would look at uh, what has gone really well, uh, what could be improved and what the next steps are. Uh, and then as part of that, you, you could, in terms of planning for the, the future, uh, look at everything again through that lens of what would we start what would we start what would we continue uh, and what would we change and that might even be an exercise that you want to run periodically every every six to eight weeks perhaps as, as we go through the, the the crisis and it moves through different phases great so now having thought about what the future could look like uh we're going to be thinking about uh the midterm and that planning over the next few months um so we are going to start thinking about uh, your COVID-19 digital roadmap, which again was a need which came up quite strongly in the survey which Alessandro set out. Um, and to be honest, I think that in terms of how you plan a digital roadmap for a time like this is the way in which you do it isn't massively different to how you do a normal digital roadmap. Um, but what it does have to be, which I think makes it markedly quite different, is easy to adapt to a number of different scenarios. Uh, so where we are based in the UK, for example, I think um, uh, some ways in which things could begin to diverge quite a lot is if in September the schools do go back, uh, or alternatively if, if there's God forbid, some kind of second wave and then schools don't reopen so um, there's lots and lots of different turning points I think and twists in the journey along the way 
So I think the big questions to ask before you think about scenarios there are where you'd like your organisation to get to with digital by the end of the crisis, which is why uh, we did the exercise previous to this, um, and what it will have achieved. And again, that might be a, a really nice set of questions that you can take back to the leadership team in your organisation to get everyone thinking about the future. And then obviously, how will that inform uh, the goals that you set for perhaps the next six months? And I think what you've already shared today, which has been brilliant, all those examples uh, in the icebreaker and also as part of the exercise previously, are some ideas which could very much be shaped into to some really great goals for your roadmap. Um, so this is just a, a template. Um, if anyone wants a copy of this template, I'm, I'm really happy to email it to you afterwards as well. And my email address is on the final slide if you want that. Or I can share it with Alessandra and he can share it if that's helpful for you. But really, as you can see here, it's a very simple spreadsheet. Um, so you would chunk things down into key areas. So it might be service delivery, it might be fundraising, it might be about infrastructure, it might be about comms, skills, obviously uh, taking your, your, your team with you and some of those roles responsibilities is, is so key for a time like this we'll be talking about that later um, but obviously the idea is you would chunk things up into these these different work streams look at what the priorities would be obviously cost those up work out what some of those key milestones as well as the dependencies are uh, and then think about what the program of work would look like um, and as you can see obviously it's not hugely different to a normal roadmap but I think really keeping it quite simple and just focusing on the key priorities is even more important at a time like this. So what I'd like you to do now, um, you probably won't be able to, to do an entire spreadsheet in, in five minutes, uh, but just what we'd like you to do is uh, to um, just start to get some ideas down uh, about the things which could go on your digital roadmap when you sit down and have a chance to do it. So I'd imagine for the purposes of this exercise, let's say that it covers the next six months. Obviously, it's likely that uh, things are going to go on beyond that. But just think about the next six months at this stage. Um, think about some of those key projects you want to do, which you've already started to touch on as part of the beginning exercise, which is, is brilliant. Uh, and then perhaps begin to think about some of the issues there that we, we mentioned around things like what some of the milestones could be. Because uh, if, you, if you've got time to do that, that'd be great. But I think maybe just getting down a few ideas about the key things you want to see on your roadmap is, is the first thing to do. So I'm going to give you... Um, couple of minutes to do that and then if you could put your ideas in the chat and then we will do some discussion about that before we move on to talking about teams. It's going to give you one more minute and then uh, we'll do a bit of feedback. back. Uh, don't worry at all if if they're just quite nascent ideas at the moment uh, that they will be because obviously this is you know just an exercise designed to get you thinking um, but who's got some ideas they would like to share with us all? Oh, Dr. Hadi, quick off the draw, very good. Should we start with you? So on our uh, uh, roadmap, uh, it will be, wanna focus on reaching most of our beneficiary uh, from the public, uh, from the people living with cancer, their families, and also the healthcare professional that we target and the healthcare workforce and the training through uh, uh, reaching them through the cloud. I think this is, uh, it's gonna be, uh, it will, uh, one of the, uh, I mean, that will help us reaching higher numbers and, a, uh, and maintaining low number of human resources. Uh, we could reach more people, we could collaborate more, we could share uh, experts from the, all over the region. I three, also through collaboration in, with UICC, and I wanna thank UICC. I mean, I just, before this webinar, the UICC staff assist us in having a, a meeting with one of the organization and we had a meeting, we share information, we benefit from it. So I think this is uh, that in our roadmap. And the second is digital fundraising. I uh, have crowdfunding, all the solution, available solution. Uh, we don't have crowdfunding yet in charities here in Qatar. So I think that's something that we could implement. The other thing is, uh, well, the other aspect that we we inspire we want to aspire to do it is the AI driven. I think we really uh, we need to invest artificial intelligence technology out there 
there are a lot of solution, even as as uh, simple as having uh, to study and help the people living with cancer. They are developing sleep problem, uh, fatigue. Uh, there are now solution will monitor their sleep, their anxiety, their heart rate. I mean, even if they are having um, uh, some question regarding their emotional status and having the solution to provide provide program for people living with cancer. So I'm, I, I think we really need to invest in the artificial intelligence technologies. Excellent, yes, and I'm sure that is uh, an, an area which lots of organizations will be thinking about e even more, because I think there's a prediction, isn't there, that the pandemic is going to massively accelerate adoption of, of AI and, and machine learning. So it'd be interesting to, to hear how everyone gets on with that. Fantastic, great, thank you. Um, and Nizreen, can we hear from you? You've got great example here about that shift from, I imagine, the uh, offline events to the, the online. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Hello, hi, hi everybody, hi Zoe. Um, it's actually um, shifting to, to reach out to donors in different ways, but not through virtual events because, um, or virtual gala dinners, though we know that some of the institutions uh, all around the world are having these type of virtual galas or virtual events. Um, but in our region, we don't find that it could be uh, really engaging. However, we thought of um, doing different uh, online platforms for our big donors and to prevent, uh, I mean, to provide um, different donation options that could directly contribute to the treatment of our patients. And in this way, they would be maintaining their uh, uh, support that they used to do during uh, big events or gala dinners and uh, probably could be also as well zoom meetings with the donors so instead mm -hmm. of visiting the donors the way that we used to do every year and this way we could keep on the contact but through zoom that sounds really good sounds like a, a great plan for how you're adopting to the new normal um, and an example which which comes to mind of an organization who i've seen take that quite traditional fundraising dinner and, and apply it to a digital format is uh, I know that Great Ormond Street Hospital Charity recently did a, uh, a, a big gala dinner online so they, mm -hmm. they had uh, I think it was Dara O'Brien who's quite a famous comedian in the UK was 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 it hosting it from his house and they did a number of different celebrities uh, filming things from their house but they also tried to recreate elements of that socializing that you would get with a, a, a real life garland and so that might be quite a nice example to, to look at and, yes. and see how they did it absolutely absolutely and, Fantastic. Very good. So lots of brilliant examples there, which which is great. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, sharing those thoughts about your digital roadmap. Uh, and of course, developing a roadmap is not going to be possible without bringing your people with you. And there were a couple of things which came from, from your feedback, which have formed the agenda about how you really motivate your teams and take them with you during a, a, a really difficult time of change. Um, so I've got some thoughts for you on that. Um, so basically I've broken this down into three top tips uh, and we are actually going to be hearing from the fantastic Dr. Olola Salako uh, in a few minutes time. Uh, but before we, we do that, uh, this is a fantastic example uh, of how you can be really, really transparent uh, with your staff uh, and also with external stakeholders as, as well. So I've put a link to this video in, in here um, and what I think is, is brilliant about it for anyone who, who hasn't had the pleasure of seeing it is uh, Dr Malola is so you know so incredibly passionate who's just so honest about the fact that no one has all the answers at the moment and she talks about uh, how her organization and indeed other organizations as well are adapting to this period of change so this is a really nice example of communications from a leader at a time of huge uncertainty which is, I think, where a leader can, can, in a very powerful way, show a bit of vulnerability, but also show uh, how they've got a vision and a plan and how they're going to implement it. And I think this works even better because, uh, as, as I was talking to um, Omelena about this on Monday, it's it's not doesn't feel very corporate or very polished. It just feels 
a very engaging and, and a very lovely, very natural piece of, of comms. So this is a, a brilliant example here, which I would encourage you to look at how you can be really transparent with staff and external stakeholders as well at a time of change. A couple of other examples, and I've deliberately picked these from uh, organisations uh, whose, whose main mission is about cancer. Uh, so Kate Collins is a CEO of a charity called Teenage Cancer Trust here in the UK uh, and she's been doing some, some really interesting stuff on Twitter just talking about how she's in the trenches with her team and they're all learning alongside each other about how the organisation is changing and also how she's trying out new technology as well. Uh, so she, she tweeted this, I think it was just after or just before everyone had gone into lockdown, certainly everyone was working from home uh, and it was this really nice series of tweets which was about how she and the team were having this virtual pub quiz, uh, how everything was a, a bit chaotic. You know, I like her point here about who's actually had a shower today. And, but most importantly, how everyone is, is just adapting and coming together. And as a leader, if you can do that and show that and really show how you are alongside your team uh, and you are learning with them, and you may not have all the answers at this stage, but you're willing to roll your sleeves up and get your hands dirty, then I think that's exactly the kind of thing that people really respond to and is, is very motivating and will bring people with you. And then a third example, uh, and this is perhaps not so much an outside of, of work one, although I think that's important for the rapport side of things we were talking about as well. So that's what we saw on the previous slide with, with Kate's example. Um, but Cheryl Mitchell, who I'm sure some of you probably uh, know well, who is CEO of uh, the Cancer Research UK charity, um, and this is just a, a very nice, well, very sort of well thought out thread where she is talking about the impact of the pandemic on those who've been affected by cancer. It's actually part of a whole thread where she very simply, very concisely just sets out the, the impact of, of, of this situation uh, and also some of the, the things she would like government to do differently and also where CR UK can help as well. Uh, so I think this is a very good, very strong example of, of leadership communications at a time of huge uncertainty because she's bringing people back to why her organisation exists uh, and how they do what they do. And I think one of the calls to action this thread was actually about looking at what their policy team are doing as well as the wider organisation. It's very well written and a, a, a really good nice short and sweet example of exactly the kind of comms people are looking to leaders for at a time like this and which will really engage people and give them that reassurance. Um, and then a final few quick points uh, before we get into talking to um, Omelena, uh, which I know came up quite a few people around using digital to communicate with remote staff, which I think speaks to the point someone raised in the pre-event survey uh, about how you do performance reviews remotely. Is um, I think obviously everyone being even more clear about roles and responsibilities and who's doing what when when you're remote working is 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 really essential. I think we we all know that probably learned that very early going into lockdown, if not before. Um, but creating that glue, really reinforcing that organisational culture, I think is is really really important for the communication but also giving people that sense of motivation at a time when they might be dealing with a, a lot of stuff at home and at work. So some examples of things that I've seen work really effectively is I think all of us are spending most of our days in, in Zoom meetings, but where you can create that time that's perhaps still work, but uh, it gives people that sense of almost office camaraderie. So I know some organisations where they have a virtual co-working. So people will just sign into Zoom at the same time. Perhaps they'll have a, a buddy from the organisation. And then it's not a meeting per se, but it's just about working alongside each other and maybe kicking some ideas around. So that could work quite nicely. And perhaps that's also a way to pair up uh, staff where they may be working together on projects or even where you might have someone who needs a bit of guidance and then someone who's who's a little bit more, more senior or seasoned. Um, a really nice mantra which came from a leader that I was talking to recently was connect then deliver. Uh, he was saying that what he finds is that if you uh, really show a particularly sort of strong interest in, in people and spend perhaps even a bit more time on the pastoral side of things then that can make the rest of, of the meeting and the interaction go even more smoothly and help people feel really motivated and, and kind of seen in a way that I think is quite hard to do online. Uh, so I think that's a very nice thing to do. Um, 
And then another trend that I'm seeing with a lot of leaders at, at the moment, and in fact, I was doing this with um, my very wonderful team uh, last week, was getting people to really talk about well-being and to prioritise that and, and to work with them in setting boundaries. Uh, so there's a charity called Mind, and I've put uh, a link to this here, where you can actually develop well-being action plans. So a manager would set these with members of their staff team, um, not as a way of checking up on people, but just as a way of really showing interest and supporting them and helping them with their mental health at a time like this so speaking to the point which which came up in the, the pre-event survey which is about how you you do the the performance management i think you are going to have an aspect of it which will be about showing interest in mental health and well-being um, but also making sure that you've got really high levels of of trust with people particularly if you've got to then go into giving them some difficult feedback as as well um, and establishing what other challenges they may be facing at the moment because um, I think a lot of people will have many different plates they're spinning so I think that's also something to take into account when you're doing performance management for people who are based remotely. Okay so hopefully that gives you some uh, food for thought that's a bit of a whistle stop tour of motivating and engaging yourself through time of change and also how to use digital to communicate with with people. Um, we're now going to do something which I'm super excited about which is to interview um, Dr Omalola Salako who I'm so pleased to have you have here and who some of you may know from um, uh, the, the work she's um, been doing within the UICC membership uh, and uh, her fantastic pioneering work at Sir Beckley Cancer Care. I, I hope I've said that correctly. Um, Dr. Omalola, welcome. I'm so pleased to have you here today. Thank you, Zoe. Same here. I'm happy to be with you all. Fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, so, as you know, I've got a couple of, of questions for you, which are, are really there so that people can hear about the amazing journey that you, you've been on over the last couple of months which I know we were talking about on Monday uh, so it'd be great to hear about some of the digital changes that that you've made in your organization during that time and and which of those you see perhaps as being short term and which are going to be longer term changes so um, Shebekli Cancer Care is an organization that is committed to empowering cancer patients in Nigeria. And very quickly when the COVID pandemic started, we realized we had to digitize our processes. Um, we had always built all of our work on our physical presence in the office, um, being together, and then, you know, just communicating via email or telephone calls at the best. But very quickly, we realized uh, that we had to switch. And that was something we quickly did. Uh, so we uh, used Zoom meetings for our communication. And we had about a week or two to strategize how we wanted to move forward. Uh, because I understand uh, I have a very unique team and they have bright ideas where we always scribble on the wall in the office. So we had to digitize that process. And we did that by um, Evernote. So everything we are used to physically in the office, we, in a team meeting online, we identified how do we want to communicate, what platform serves us best. And we decided, oh, we'll go for Zoom meetings for our communication on a daily basis. We developed a roster on how we would best communicate so that we're not meeting every day. Uh, we then decided that, you know what, we don't have a, a, a digital expert amongst us. Let's go look for someone in the space who is a notable um, leader. So some of us in the team got mentors in the digital space. So because we could not afford getting, um, you know, paying such people with such expertise. So we, we brought in the expertise of digital leaders uh, in social media, in digital fundraising. Uh, we put all our ideas from the wall. We moved that to Evernote. Um, our project management, the way we conduct our meetings, we transferred that to Asana. So we just identified the different units in, in, in the office and transferred it online. And then to our programs, uh, we, we support patients, they come in on a daily basis. We had to quickly, quickly create a WhatsApp group uh, to you know, quickly meet their needs. 
of information counseling and just answering their questions because at that point, there was a lot of confusion about cancer patients being vulnerable population and they could not find reliable, um, and they, could, they could also could not go to the hospitals either. So we quickly had to reach out to our database and we said, we now have a WhatsApp group. If you have your questions, come online. Uh, luckily, uh, we've been on a four year journey developing a cancer app called uncopadi.com, which is telemedicine. And just as we were about going on lockdown, we perfected the product and then that has been available. And in the space of three months, we have now conducted about 300 telemedicine consultations. We've brought on oncologists, we've brought on cancer survivors, just for one purpose, to continue to provide information to cancer patients. Um, so I, I would just say very quickly, we adapted to the situation. We brought all the, our minds together and just decided what product suits us best and for what purpose. That's brilliant. And I think what you, you've described there and those, those new projects you've, you've stood up as well as the, the, the offline stuff, which you've, you've had to sort of digitise as, as well, is I think that's such a wonderful example of collective leadership where you, you treated this as um, how you collectively solve a problem as a team and, and got people really thinking and, and engaging with it. Uh, so that I think takes us very nicely onto my, my second question, which is about um, the, the longer term, I suppose, and where you see digital's role in managing staff. And you talked about the way in which you, you reach patients after the crisis. Do you think there's an opportunity here for, for reinvention for your organisation and, and maybe others as well? Okay, so I think the biggest lesson I've learned in the digital space is uh, as a leader, I, I have now stopped prioritizing that the best work comes from the office. Um, in the space of two months, we've attracted grants. We have repurposed uh, grants for other projects uh, to our digital projects. We have launched three digital product, uh, products, and we have three more in the pipeline. So in terms of reinvention, uh, there, there, there has always been so many opportunities for us to tap into, but we, the, as a leader, I didn't prioritize it. The Cancer app has always been there for the past four years. And before the COVID pandemic, we had just done maybe 30 consultations. So in terms of reinvention, um, digital health actually helps us to bridge our, helps us to achieve our mission, which is to empower cancer patients. And if 100 million cancer patients in Nigeria are connected, sorry, if 100 million Nigerians are online, then using the online platform to educate them, to teach them how to support people living with cancer is, an, is a low hanging fruit that has always been there. So for me, I, the, the pandemic has reinvented how I see things using digital platforms to create more awareness, have a wider reach. Um, and then just helping my team to deliver their best work, not necessarily from the office, but from home, getting them to think uh, the quality of their, of their thinking is in, in the past three months I see um, it's much better than even the whole of last year. It's possible that we would hit our targets for this year in the next two months rather than at the end of the month. So I would say it's, um, I, I must. Oh. Can you still hear us from Malola? Oh yes, I can. Oh. So, so I would say to your question in the long term is we now have to identify our best work, which of our best work can we do from home and which ones are compulsory for us to come into the office. Uh, for us as Shebekli Cancer Care, it's important we come into the office because we're a family and we already miss being together. We, we miss the human interface. And um, so in the long term, we're just looking for that balance of the uh, productivity, where the best of our productivity, where is it coming from? Is it the online space or is it the um, offline space? And that's the balance we're trying to get. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much, Leila. It sounds like there's some really exciting opportunities for, for reinvention in, in all organisations. Perhaps the silver lining that will come out of, of, of all of this. Um, we've now got some time for questions. So we run till two o'clock and I can already see that people have put some comments in the, the chat. Uh, so does anyone have any questions for uh, Leila? Um, yeah, maybe I can. Um, yeah, go for it. Don't drag on. Heard from 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 you and from another um, uh, a colleague here from the from the webinar that you guys have already reached your um, funding expectations of the year, which I find amazing. And I would very much like to know how you've managed that. I mean, we have definitely tried to. We've changed to online and and Zoom meetings with the sponsors, but seems to me that uh, it's not really working that well in a country like Mexico. I come from Mexico and um, yeah, I just want to maybe hear a little bit about that so I can maybe gather some tools and, and use them as well. I'd love to be one of you who says that I've reached my goal already of the year. <laughs> Brilliant. Shall we start with you, Amelona, on that one? Amalena, do you want to, to respond to that one about the fundraising? Uh, thing? I'm sorry, uh, the line was breaking, I didn't catch. Oh, that's okay. Um, Alexandra, I think you wanted to know about, um, obviously you've had some incredible progress on the loan on reaching the, your fundraising target, I think you mentioned. Um, so it'd be brilliant to know how you've done that. I think that's what Alexandra wanted to know. Okay, uh, so it was, a bit easy because we had applied for a particular grant that had, you know, come in and what we wanted to do was to screen women for breast and cervical cancer in the community. But because the the, the lockdown and right now the the primary health care communities are being used for COVID-19 response, the funders thought it was not a good idea. So we were about to lose the grant. And we quickly had to repurpose that grant to to um to the telemedicine app and what we asked for was we we want the funds to be used to ensure about five thousand cancer patients can connect with an oncologist or a cancer survival and so we repurposed the grant we we have a digital fundraiser um but very quickly because we haven't activated that uh so i can't um, give you much advice, but from my past experience on digital fundraising, it starts with having a strong offline component. Everything is not online, so having influencers, people who believe in your cause, they may be celebrities, they may be, you know, stakeholders, they may be survivors who have benefited, and there has to be a digital strategy to it where you create maybe banners, fly e flyers and you put their faces to it and they become ambassadors and they say, I support uh, this project. And on a certain day, you have like a digital calendar where everyone releases the information online. Uh, and it's one message, uh, you're donating to this cost for, for, for this cost to this organization. It's the same banner, the same message. So <clears throat> uh, then it's always good to have champions um, and those champions understand your vision. Uh, say, if you're trying to raise $3,000, for example, um, your champions, it's, it's really a digital uh, strategy. There's a lot of planning that goes behind, uh, behind it. There's a budget for digital ads, uh, like Facebook ads. Uh, there's a component that happens on the TV, the radio, uh, where you also get the media support. So you, you're sort of going to activate maybe six channels, TV, radio, influencers, survivors, special programs like this webinar, where you're educating maybe a certain group of people. And in that educational program, you're, you're driving home your message of you're raising funds 
to it. So it's usually a, a mixture of different things to achieve one goal, which is to raise funds. Uh, then you must have a campaign name that is really attractive. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I think someone else had mentioned they had met their goal this year, one of the participants, uh, if that person can also take me. Sorry, I'm speaking with me, uh, so apologies. Um, I think we've got time for one um, quick que final question, uh, which was, I think Charles had a quick question actually just about bringing staff with you. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, on Malola, how you can bring staff with you? Because obviously you, you've done a lot and you've led quite a lot of, of change over the last couple of months. Oh yes, uh, so, so at Shebekli, what we do now is we have just one meeting a week and um, everyone owns the ideas. Um, we all own the ideas. We've always had that culture of bring your ideas forward. And in a team meeting, we all agree to how we're moving forward with that idea. Um, and I, I must say that that's what has made us um, come up with very innovative ideas because because it's a collection of different people's ideas so we create room for effective meetings uh, we have just one group team meeting in a week uh, we limit it to an hour 30 minutes it's well run uh, so we already have a template on what we want to achieve from our from our meetings so everyone is carried um, along they also understand their reporting lines um, something we are now looking into is uh, to actually bring in a, a, um, a human resource personnel, uh, but this time uh, we want the person to have, um, they call this matrix, they call it the success performance software. Uh, so it's not just the HR person that would manage the team, but also she has, he or she would have the ability to, to monitor their digital um, output on an individual basis. So um, yes, because now we have transitioned. Before we could monitor very easily from meetings, physical meetings, but now we have to also measure digitally on on the output. So we are now looking for a HR person with digital skills in measuring such performance metrics. So so there's also that part where you have to monitor if your digital activities are translating to success or not, and then bringing in other leaders who have experience in, in along the line. And earlier I had mentioned, we brought in digital mentors, and now we're looking for a, a HR with digital expertise. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dr. Amalola. That's a really great note to, to end on as well, really emphasizing that importance of collective decision making getting everyone behind it and then think about what metrics indicate success as well so thank you so much everyone uh we had a very lively discussion here today um super grateful to um dr omalola for giving up her time uh to share so many brilliant ideas and to share her journey and we're very grateful to you for doing that too uh before we wrap up uh, just a couple of resources which will be on the slides that will be sent around to you. Uh, there's a specific COVID-19 digital checklist for leaders which I've been involved in developing which we will share with you. It's free, easy to access and uh, there's also some best practice in leadership from a, another free resource called the Charity Digital Code of Practice which hopefully will, will get you all thinking about your further development as, as leaders. Uh, we also have a couple of other webinars, about three more webinars coming up in the series uh, looking at service delivery and fundraising. Um, I, my colleagues Jen and Bex are here today. Jen and Bex, anything you want to say quickly about that? Um, just I think some of the questions people have asked around digital fundraising, um, I think we'll be covering some of those in the, in the session. Um, and also some of the things that Omalola said um, are also really relevant to what I'm talking about, especially around kind of influencers and champions and um, kind of making most of the, the people that you have to fundraise and things like that. So I think we'll cover quite a lot of those points. So hopefully we'll see lots of you there in a couple of weeks. 
lovely. And Bex, do you want to say anything about service delivery? Yeah, very similar sentiment that we've already started to hear about service design in this session. So we'll build on that um, when we when we talk about that in a couple of weeks time. So we're looking forward to seeing some of you at that one. Brilliant. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for all your contributions today uh, and for sharing your ideas. Huge, huge thank you um, to Omelola for giving up her time to share her amazing story uh, and to tell us all about some of the uh, things she's been, been working on bringing her team with her on over the last couple of months. Uh, Alessandra, is there anything you want to say before we wrap up? Nothing else. Just a thank you to uh, Team to Joy, to Amalol, and to all the participants who are taking the time to participate and uh, look forward to seeing you at the next sessions. Great. Thank you so much, Alessandro, and thank you, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you next time.